Picture this. You're outside on a hot summer's day. You're playing football with your kids. You're running around, you're getting a bit of a sweat on. And then it's time to go home. You don't want your house to be hot. You want everything to be automated. So you run your scene just when you're ready to go and your air conditioner turns on and you come home into perfect comfort. Today, we're going to take a look at how you can use your S23 Ultra and your Samsung device in general to automate your life both on the device and on your devices in the home. Let's go. Hello everybody, welcome back to Take With Benefits. Daniel here, and today's video we have a couple of different ways that you can turn your Samsung device into your automation machine. On your device, and we're gonna be focusing specifically on Samsung's features only in this video, there are three main apps that you can use to integrate into your daily life to help you do things a bit more automatically. They are Reminder, Modes and Routines, and Smart Things. We'll get to Smart Things a little bit later. We're going to start with Reminder. The Reminder app on your Samsung phone is built by Samsung. It's been there pretty much since the launch of Bixby. They've removed the Bixby name from it, with good reason, I imagine, as well, to make it more a standalone app, not tied into its smart assistant. The good thing is, though, it still is integrated, and there are still ways to make it work. But as an app on its own, it's got some incredible automation features. So whilst the app has a lot of other tie-ins when it comes to syncing it with Microsoft To Do and Microsoft Reminders, the stuff we're going to focus on today is more specifically targeted to how you can create automated reminders for your daily life. The first thing you'll probably need to do is in your Samsung account, load in all of your places. So whether that be your home, your work, your supermarket, your car, that way, the Reminders app links in with that, and then when you set Reminders, it has those locations to refer to. But there's some ways that you can create your Reminders. You can use Bixby. Depending on your country, it could be a really great way of using it. I'm in Australia, and Bixby Voice has not quite learned the Australian accent or lexicon. It is very much set up for the US English and UK English. I mostly will use my Reminders by typing them in. However, you can do it. So for example, you can say, remind me to put the bins out when I get home. Your reminder saved, put the bins out when you arrive at home. And it will understand that. And I think that bins reminder is a really good one because let's say you're at work and you know it's bin night when you, need, when you get home, you can add that reminder in and the second you pull up into your driveway, it's going to pop up with that reminder and you just go and do it. There's other features within Reminder that actually will make it even easier than you just needing to re remember to make the reminder. If you set the reminder up once, it will pop off every single week at the time you set it for. So again, the put the bins out one, if you know that every Tuesday night is bin night, you can add in the time, you can add in the day, and you can make it repeat every single week on that day at that time. And as you can see, there's a, a lot of different options when it comes to time and presets that you can create. But this specific one works a treat. And because you can load in more than one place, you can add in other ones as well. Let's say you get a phone call to go pick up some milk while you're at work. On your way home, you might need to stop into your local supermarket to pick some milk up. You can then set that reminder. When I arrive at the supermarket, remind me to pick up milk. And the second you pull into that car park at the supermarket, that reminder is going to pop up and then you won't forget to get milk. Well, sometimes I find that does happen. You may remind yourself and tell yourself, but no matter how many things you have to remind you, you still forget. Crazy. And then you can even load in your car. So you can then add in a reminder contextualized to when you get into your car or when you get out of your car and those reminders will, will pop up depending on that situation. So that's how you can kind of automate some reminders. And look, I encourage you to deep dive in yourself. And if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments. Now we're gonna move on to the modes and routines app. And fun fact, this actually started its life as a good lock module way back with the Galaxy Note 8. And I remember when it came out, I put everyone onto it. I was very excited and we showed everyone that we could 
what this module within Goodlock could do. Samsung obviously thought the same thing because the next year, Routines was a fully fledged app and function on its own. So the way modes and routines works is it's split up into two different tabs. Down the bottom, you have the modes tab and the routines tab. Let's go through the modes tab first. The modes tab are what Samsung gives you as pre-selected sort of modes that it thinks you can use frequently. There's work, there's sleep, there's driving. And when you click on it, let's say driving, for example, it gives you some conditions and some things that it can do based off driving. That's the condition that gets met, whether it be a Bluetooth device or whether it recognizes you driving in your car. It will then activate a whole subset of actions, whether that be blocking notifications, stopping you from being able to open apps, which is great. It's a great safety thing. But there's other things within the mode thing as well, like work, for example. You can set up a work mode and again, you can automate this. So when it's 8.30 on a Monday, work mode turns on. And similar sort of thing to the driving, you can block notifications from certain apps. You can allow phone calls and messages just from contacts only. And it gives you that chance between 8.30 and five o'clock to just straight focus on work. And there's even a handy little button there that when it's on public holidays, it'll turn that off. So you're not disrupted on your public holiday. Really smart. But of course you can add in your custom modes and that's where you can go through and find different ways of being able to suit your lifestyle within modes. Now modes are a little bit different to routines because modes is more about certain scenarios, whereas routines, you can go way more granular. The great thing with the routines, I've had a number set up for a number of years that continue to come with every phone. They just smart switch across and I continue to use the ones that I've got. Let's go through the list of routines conditions that you can create things from. So it's broken down. You can of course start it manually, but the first subheading that you've got there is context. And there's a whole list of things within there. You then have time. So again, a subset of conditions before the action can start. Place, obviously that goes without saying, it's a location. You've got different connection types. So whether that be Wi-Fi on or off, Wi-Fi strength, just ridiculous amount of subset of conditions for connections. There's device. So if you're connecting to a certain device, whether it be Bluetooth, wired headphones even, like just an astronomical amount of different things. You've got a specific event, like if you wanted to set one up based on Samsung DeX loading, even down to getting a phone call. Plus there's a whole bunch more down the bottom. For example, you can set it up. So when you connect to a Bluetooth speaker, it will automatically start to play music. So you set that up, you run it. You don't even need to run it. As soon as you connect to that Bluetooth speaker, your music app that you select will automatically start playing music. Obviously for copyright reasons, not going to play the music, but you can see that the play button got activated and the music is playing when that connection started. I've got one set up and I've just set it up recently. I had it set up a while ago and I turned it off, but I'm bringing it back where when your phone is on charge between a certain hours and also when you're at home, it will automatically turn on always on display permanently. I have it set up as tap to show right now. And then, and then you can even choose to rotate it. If you have one of those wireless charging stands, you can have it set up so it can be landscape. So you can check the time through the night when your phone is charging. There are really limitless possibilities when it comes to the routines that you can create. And you can go as crazy or as granular as you like. For example, I've had one set up for a number of years that when I open the YouTube app, my do not disturb comes on, my media volume goes down to 41%. And the reason why I've set it as, as low is because, you know, you can have your media volume up quite loud sometimes. And then when you start playing a YouTube video, it might alert everyone. So I set it to be 41%, so it's not too loud. And then if I need it louder, I can go louder. If not, I can leave it at the temp at the one that it is. And I also have auto rotate activated because I hate auto rotate on normally, but when I open things like the gallery and YouTube, I have it so it turns it on. And the best part is as soon as you finish that action, so if I close YouTube, all the actions get reversed. Great. There's even a handy little notification that lets you know that that routine is running. So if something's happening that you don't remember you had the routine on, it can tell you that this is happening because the routine is running. So you can remember, maybe go turn it off if you don't need that anymore. Down the very bottom of your routines triggers is routines plus. Now routines plus is a good lock module. I have gone through good lock 
in a full video, but I didn't quite touch on Routines Plus because I was saving it for now. Routines Plus is an add-on to Routines that can give you even more granular control over things. For example, say you've got four fingers on your fingerprint scanner, you can set it up so one fingerprint unlock will trigger a certain action. So I want it to necessarily, let's say I want it to open a website. I can use this finger, push it down on the fingerprint scanner, and then it will open the website that I've determined it to be. Genius. There's other ones too, like you can, let's say you've got a phone with an S Pen, I can set it up so that the pressing the button might activate the air conditioner. So that way, when I'm out, again, same sort of thing as earlier in the video, when I double press the S Pen, it will trigger the scene to turn my air conditioner on. And that's a really good segue into talking about the smart things automation. So SmartThings is our last stop on the Samsung automation station. Deary me. This extends automation from your device into your home. Myself personally, I have Samsung TVs, I have Samsung air conditioners that formulate part of my smart home experience. Now I could have more, but at the moment this is sort of what I have. I have two frame TVs and two Samsung air conditioners. But with these devices, I can create specific scenes and routines to automate certain functions of these devices. Scenes are kind of a bit more manual. So for example, that double press on my S Pen that I just spoke about, that will activate the air conditioner. That's based off a scene. So I can go into scenes and set up certain different things. So at the press of a button, it will activate that thing. The perfect example is setting up and turning on the air conditioner, perfect. And scenes can also formulate a part of a routine, whether that be the routines app or the smart things routine function, you can integrate a scene into that. But scenes I find are best created to be manually controlled, like with the press of the S Pen button or the Samsung smart tag that has a button. So you can press that button and that will also activate a scene for you. But the routines within smart things, which is separate to the routines, from the routines app, don't get me started, that creates certain conditions for things to be automated without needing to press anything. And there's a lot of different conditions that run in there, like things like being able to set what the temperature is outside, what the humidity level is, and then that will activate and turn on the air conditioner. What? Like that is wild. It will also use the sensor on the air conditioner to be able to detect the room humidity and then also activate it. So like you can have within the air conditioner itself, there's example routines or recommended routines where if the sensor on the device detects a certain temperature level or a certain humidity level, it will activate the air conditioner at a specific, between a specific time period. So after 10 PM, for example, and then it will stay on for seven hours while you're asleep and then turn back off. Like that is just straight automation. You don't have to lift a finger after you've set that up. It will do all of that for you. But one that I really like within scenes, if you activate a certain device, it can activate another one. So I've now set up that at between the hours of nine o'clock at night and 11 o'clock at night, when I turn on my bedroom TV, it is then going to also turn on my bedroom air conditioner. The reason I've done that is because we usually turn both on anyway. So rather than having to get the remote for both, I can just turn on the TV with the one remote and it will activate both devices. Proper automation. Now, whilst that is what I do, there's a whole host of other things that you can integrate into your SmartThings automations. Whether that be turning on your front entry light as you come in through the door. If you have a smart light, that will then activate your air conditioner if you wish it to be. If you have uh, your washing machine that you've got within SmartThings, if you leave the house and it knows that, it can potentially activate the drying cycle. Or you can have your TV part of your automation when it comes to your bedtime routine, where after between the certain hours your TV is still on and you're definitely asleep, it'll activate and turn off your TV. So many things within this automations tab within SmartThings that if you have the right devices around you, it will create effortless home automation. These are Samsung's first party automation features. I'm not going to touch on today Google's system or Alexa or whatever other automation systems are out there. What Samsung has on its device will serve you greatly.
Bixby also ties in nicely to Samsung's automation features, but I'm going to leave that for another video. If you want to see Bixby, let me know in the comments below, and uh, I'll try and do a video on everything that Bixby can do. But that's it for this week. Hopefully you've managed to get something out of it. If you haven't and you think there's something more that I can cover with it, again, drop me a line in the comments. But obviously, like and subscribe. I really uh, appreciate if you would subscribe because we can hang out more. You know how it is. Uh, but between now and my next video, you can come hang out with me on Twitter and Instagram. And other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Yo!